In today's video, I'll be taking you through my current push day, teaching you how to perform movements correctly, how to be efficient in the gym, how hard should you be training, the importance of volume delegation, and what your set should look like. If you're new here, my name is Alex Mendoza. I'm an online coach, and I help men lose weight and keep it off without restrictive diets, without wasting hours in the gym, so that you can finally regain control of your health, improve your productivity, and focus at work, and feel more confident in your own body. So here's a quick physique update. Now, genetics can play a massive role on how much volume you have to dedicate to a specific muscle group, how your muscle bellies insert, and just your overall physical look. Now, I'm very shoulder dominant, and fortunately, they tend to grow even with five sets throughout the week. Having said that, my posterior chain has always been a weak point, which is something I've been focused on improving over the past two or so years. Understanding your genetic strong points, which you'll only really be able to determine through experience and practice, will eventually heavily influence how you design your training program. People tend to overcomplicate the process too much, and to keep things super simple, to grow a specific muscle group, just do more volume. Volume is an equation calculated by sets times rep times weight. And to manipulate volume, you can increase one of the three variables. A lot of people, myself included, tend to often neglect warm-ups. Warm-ups are crucial for injury prevention and can assist with mobility and quality of muscle activation, helping you get a little bit more out of your time spent in the gym. At a bare minimum, I do two to three sets of cable external rotations, targeting your rotator cuff, which is an important stabilizer for a lot of movements. Neglecting this muscle can lead into a lot of pain and injuries. Ideally, you want to spend a bit more time and put in a little bit more work to pre-engage and warm up the muscle, but I also understand that not a lot of people have time, so at a bare minimum, do two to three sets of this exercise. Now for our first exercise, we're starting with chest-supported front raises, warming up our front delts. During the performance of this movement, avoid swinging, let your arm dead hang, and really focus on raising the dumbbells only with your front delt. Ascend until the dumbbells are parallel to the ground and aim to reach with two to three reps in reserve. Keep this movement light and for reference, I'm doing about five to 10 kilos. I try to avoid the terms heavy and light because they're very subjective. I also want you guys to stop using the words heavy and light because those terminologies are ultimately just for beginners. 100 kilos can feel heavy or it can feel light. 60 kilos can also feel heavy if you slow it down. Moving forward, you want to be describing your sets with tempo or RIR. Tempo describes the speed of the movement and RIR is an acronym for reps and reserve. Now we're starting with an incline smith press. I always opt for a machine because it's safer, it allows for better isolation and engagement, and offers a lot more stability. For this exercise, we're doing a back off set. So our first set is a total of eight reps with one to zero reps in reserve. Now for our second set, our goal is to hit 12 reps with also zero to one reps in reserve. Naturally, due to fatigue accumulation, you're going to want to reduce your weight load on your second set in order for you to be able to reach your goal rep count. If the weight used on your first set is the same as your second set, it typically means that your first set was not done correctly or at the right intensity. During an incline smith press, tuck your elbows, pinch your shoulder blades together. This should naturally elevate your upper chest, reducing the loading on your front delt. Now, you want to line up the bar maybe one to two inches beneath your clavicle and pause with about a one inch gap between the bar and your chest. Maintain your tension throughout the entire exercise and at the top of the movement, avoid sudden lockout to prevent any potential injuries. Aim for two to three seconds down, one second pause, two seconds up, and one second pause at the top. Rest for two minutes between each set then proceed to the next exercise, which would be an incline dumbbell press. They both target the same muscle group, so if you prefer, you can actually perform the first exercise with a total of four sets instead. Personally, I do prefer the incline dumbbell press as you're not restricted to a specific motion path. During this exercise, a lot of people do tend to get the setup process wrong, so to do this correctly, grab the dumbbells and place it on your lap. Just before you're ready to start your set, thrust and use small momentum to move the dumbbells to the top of your kneecaps. When you're ready, drive your knees up. Pretend like you're trying to knee someone in the chin as hard as you can. This will launch the dumbbells up without straining your shoulder. Stabilize yourself in position, line up the dumbbells together, and then press. Again, have your shoulder blades pinched and tucked to avoid front delt loading. And as you're going down, you want to be spreading the dumbbells apart. And you want to end the movement when the dumbbells are one inch away from making contact from your chest. Any lower can irritate the front delt. Now, if you're unable to maintain a two second eccentric, meaning again on the way down, a one second concentric, so on the way up, and a one second pause at the top of the movement, it's probably too heavy. Perform this exercise with two sets. One set, aim for 12 reps with RIR one or zero, and second set, aim for 10 reps with 
RIR1 or 0 again using the same weight. Rest 2 minutes between sets and if you can't get the first rep on your own, the weight is probably too heavy so again just drop your ego. For our third exercise we're going to be doing a seated cable press. Two sets of 15 to 12 reps depending on your training block aim to perform most exercises with 2 to 0 reps in reserve. Studies show that training close to failure stimulates most growth. Training to mechanical failure versus 2 reps in reserve don't really show significant differences. Personally, I like to train to failure because it does develop a positive mindset. I like knowing that I put in maximum effort. So if anything, it's more of a psychological benefit for myself. Maybe as a beginner, aim to prioritize the performance of exercises correctly before placing too much focus on training intensity. Because the last thing you want to do is build bad foundations and then later down the road, train to failure and injure yourself. So get the form right first. If you don't have this machine, you can do a standing cable press or a flat plate press. Any exercise really targeting that lower pectoral fiber. You'll notice that most chest exercises we avoid having our elbows flared out and we try to minimize as much front delt engagement as possible. The path of movement is typically triangular, spreading our arms apart at the bottom, then try to touch our hands or knuckles together at the top. You want to press from your nipple area and maintain tension throughout the entire movement. And then to wrap things up, we have a pec fly. For two sets, 20 to 15 reps. Typically, I don't have this much chest volume in a single day, but we've dedicated more volume towards other muscle groups in previous blocks. So right now, we're just trying to manipulate portion and size. A lot of people tend to think that buying one program will solve all their problems, but that's not the case. You need to really zoom out and really understand the purpose of each block, each phase, each training period and how that would influence your overall progression and symmetry of physique. During this exercise, you want to maintain contact with your back on the bench, have a slight bend in your elbows to minimize bicep tension and avoid flaring your elbows out. A common mistake I see people make is having too much bend in their elbows and hunching a bit too much forward using their body weight to ultimately move the weights. So keep your back straight and push your handles away from your body, not towards. We then move on to lateral raises. Two sets of 15 to eight rests. Between each set, rest for 90 seconds. Personally, I prefer pin loaded lateral raises, but unfortunately, I didn't have access to that machine in this gym. I want you to pretend like you're pouring water in a cup, leading with your elbows. You want your arms extended, with a slight bend. Avoid raising the dumbbells directly to the side of your torso. This will lead to a lot of trap recruitment, which isn't the goal for this exercise. Aim to raise the dumbbell or the machine within the scapular plane, following this angle shown on the screen. A common mistake I see people make is bending their elbows and looking like a chicken flapping their arms. So ultimately you want, again, your hand fully extended. You want your elbows rotated down. I like to also say thumbs down, shoulders round and lead with your elbow. Don't go directly to the side of your torso, lead with your elbows and almost rotate your thumb down as you ascend through the movement. If you try it with me right now, you'll notice that your lateral delt will actually engage a lot more as well. Avoid over raising as well. Ascend through the movement and when your arms are parallel to the ground or slightly just before, you're going to want to end the movement there. Now to wrap everything up, I do have one unilateral bicep exercise. Unilateral exercises are great for fixing imbalances and always start with your weaker arm. If your arm fails at rep eight, and the opposite arm at rep 8 as well, no matter what. Play two sets with 12 to 10 reps on each arm and have 1 to 0 reps in reserve with 60 seconds rest in between each arm. Tuck your armpits into the padding, rotate your elbows out to place more emphasis on the bicep short head, also known as the inner portion of your bicep. This session should only take 60 minutes to complete with the right training intensity, programming, and execution quality. All you really need is 10 to 14 sets. Now, the key to growth is progressive overload, which again is measured through an incremental progression in volume week by week. I also want to play back training intensity, which is where a lot of people tend to go wrong. This is how difficult your final set should look like. Take note on how my form does not break. This is crucial for injury prevention and to maximize engagement on the targeted muscle group. You can use an RPE chart to dictate your training intensity. RIR0 is equivalent to RPE10. And typically you want to maintain your intensity between RPE8 or 9 if you want to optimize growth. Volume delegation is more important when you're really trying to manipulate physical symmetry or proportions, which personally I think a lot of people should. Aesthetic bodies are not built by accident programs are carefully planned to manipulate proportions to create a specific look and balance the body. You can still build muscle during the fat loss process, so those are some key things you should consider as well. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button for more value. Message me on Instagram if you have any questions, and if you really want to fast track your results, whether that be building muscle or losing up to 40 to 100 pounds, click the link in my bio and send to an inquiry.